recently a comment was left in one of my videos regarding the DP63A. Now, the person who commented had mentioned that the meter required uh, see a lead, lead shielding over the display. Now, they hadn't actually seen the case and the fact that it did actually come with shielding on it. Um, and it made me think, you know, in terms of the radiation levels uh, that this unit gives off, because it is in quite a unique position that, you know, it has this pretty much insane uh, radium dial and uh, it also comes with a strontium 90 check source in it as well. And it got me thinking about just shielding in general. Um, you can obviously see in the background here, uh, you know, even just sitting this close to the unit, um, we're, we're practically on, on one uh, microsievert. But what I wanted to do today was, obviously I have two of these. Um, this one has the radium display removed and this one still has the radium display in place. So I'm in quite a unique position here that um, I can go from what is the radiation level from outside, what is the radiation level inside, what is the radiation level with the glass you know removed or from underneath the display what what is the gamma reading what is the beta reading and what is the alpha reading so that's what i'm going to do in this video today now i do not like going anywhere near the radium display in this uh it is pretty dangerous i'm going to be wearing a couple of different pairs of gloves i am wearing a mask and i'm going to be doing it very very quickly because i don't like uh, being exposed to the radium display for too long. Now the radium display is stored inside this lead pig. Uh, I will be using tweezers to remove it and the meters I will be using today are as follows. To get an alpha reading uh, and to show an alpha reading in microsieverts I will be using the radius scan. To get a counts per second reading I will be using the Rotem Ran Genie. And then to get a gamma only reading, I will be using the uh, FH40 FTM. Right, okay, so let's begin by doing a reading from outside the unit. So I'll start with the radius scan first of all. So there's a combined beta and gamma. and it's flicking between 18 and 19. So we'll say 18 and a half. So 18.5 microsieverts in combined beta and gamma. And if we do gamma only, turn the light on, maybe easier to see. And okay, so in gamma, we can see it's around about 17. So we can see there that most of what's being given off by the display is actually gamma and that the beta is obviously being blocked by the uh, little piece of aluminium that's on the top here. So the reading from the radius scan was detecting a little bit of hard beta but it was mostly gamma and that the gamma is 17 microsieverts. Okay so next we will open it and I will do the same process again. Okay, we're up at about 65, 66. Okay, we'll say 66 microsieverts. So that was 66 microsieverts then uh, with the glass is now shielding. So depending on how far away the display is and obviously how thick that glass is, that is obviously doing a little bit of shielding as well. So we'll do another gamma only check. And the gamma went as high as 32 there, 32 microsieverts. So you can see there that then a lot of the, uh, almost half, 
the, uh, the radiation is beta and half is gamma. So that's quite interesting again. And we'll do a little counts per second check on it as well. So we'll say 760 counts per second then with it like this. Now the next part what I will be doing is I will be taking this unit apart. I will be using the uh, display that I have stored in here. So I'm going to move this all this out of the way and then I'm going to devise it in such a way that I do not have to, uh, well <laughs> I don't like the, the radium display and I have a worry that it will contaminate some of the pancake probes. So I have to be very, very careful with it. And uh, I'll have to come up with a way of doing it that uh, I don't have to get the display in contact with the pancake probe. So quick jump cut. And okay, so here's what I've come up with. Uh, I've got these little rubber strips, which will give me sufficient clearance. So I'm gonna put the little radium display in the middle here, and that will give me enough then that I can do that and avoid getting any contamination inside the pancake probe. Right, so I'm going to take the display out first of all, lay it in here, and then I'm going to change my gloves. Uh, what I will do first of all though is I will do it in, just to avoid wasting sets of gloves. I will do it with the inside the bag first of all so that it's blocking the uh, the alpha. So there's the display inside there. So I'll put that like that. So currently the alpha is being blocked by the plastic bag. So I'll do the radius scan. Now the radius scan goes to 10 uh, millisievert. Okay, so with the alpha being blocked and I will say eight millimeters of distance, I am on 4.26 millisievert. I'll take that away and then I'll do counts per second and I have overflowed this in counts per second and this meter will go to 42,000 counts per second and I've, I've overflowed it. So I'll reset that. Right and I will go back now and I will check what the gamma is. Obviously it's not going to make much difference with the bag like this, but it's always nice just to check it. Uh, what I will do in this situation is I will lift the bag up and I will put it directly. And we're up at about 70, we've got to about 79 microceiver it's there in gamma only okay so now what I will do is I will take it out of the bag and then I will change my gloves so I will put it here I'll put the plastic back and I will change my gloves now because obviously I was just in case I have anything, I don't want to transfer this to, over to uh, the meter. So I'll put on another fresh pair of gloves. So we saw that in the bag, uh, we were upwards of four millisievert. So all of the alpha was being blocked then. So now we're going to do it with all the alpha is there is nothing blocking it. So I'll put it right over. That is right over now.
And again, we're not far away from four milli sievert. I'll try to do this time is get it a little bit closer. So you can see distance definitely does have an effect. I have it about three millimeters away from the back. I need to change the batteries as well. So I'll say six and a half there and then we will do another. What I will do this time actually is I will uh, put on the cap on the round genie. And that's given me 408, 431, 458 microsieverts in combined beta and gamma. So the vast majority then of that is beta we saw because obviously putting it through this gamma only meter we were getting up roughly about 80. So the vast majority of that was beta. So we can see there then that the alpha and soft beta makes up the majority of this and in the millisievert range and then in hard beta gamma we're getting around about 450 and then in gamma on its own we are getting roughly about well say 75 uh, would be the average there so yeah you can see why I don't like using you know getting it out very often because it is very, very dangerous and it is just not worth it. Uh, you know, by all means, if you want to buy one, buy one. I bought two, as you can see. So um, I, uh, they're great for, you know, experimenting with, but uh, the other one I have will be staying inside the, uh, the case. I won't be removing it. It will be staying in there uh, and I'm glad I have these lead pigs because they just make things a lot safer. And now that I have that in there and these rubber pads I can take these gloves off. So I'll take those gloves off and what I will do very very quickly is just so there's no residual contamination on the desk all the contamination is coming from this from the lead pig itself and what I'll do is very very quickly So inside the lead pig I'm getting 12.3 microsieverts of combined beta and gamma and then if I go back to the display that's obviously here so with this all closed up is how I would usually keep it in the shed and we're on 20, 21, 21 microsieverts then just with the case like that. So that would be equivalent to some of my pitch blend that I have on the shelf beside me. So having these away uh, somewhere else in the shed or kept them in a drawer somewhere, they're perfectly safe to have around you. Obviously you don't want to be sleeping with it under your pillow or carrying around, carrying it, you know, around your waist every single day when you're at work or, you know, keeping it in your underpants or things like that there uh, but yeah it's it, it's an awesome meter don't get me wrong it's cool I'm really glad I own one but they're very very dangerous if you are you know playing with them probably isn't the right word to use but if you are you know buying them to just have as a check source 
just be very, very, very careful with them. Uh, they're not a toy. Um, I am not a professional, but I do know safety when it comes to radiation and it pays to be careful with these. If you're going to be taking these apart to take the display out of them, please wear the appropriate PPE. Wear gloves, wear a mask. Make sure you, you know, properly sanitize the desk after you've done it in case there's any dust. Just be very, very careful. And, uh, you know, they are cool to own, but yes, be careful. Uh, hopefully that's cleared up a couple of uh, questions I've got recently. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye.